welcome everybody. It's Marta from Subquery. This is our last lesson. This is the final part of uh, the course, how to uh, build the apps with the help of Subquery. I'm so happy that you are here. Let's jump in. Let's find out what we will talk about in the last lesson. So just a brief recap, what Subquery brings, what you can achieve with Subquery. So Subquery is an open, uh, reliable, uh, flexible and fast indexer that allows you to take data from blockchain in an efficient way, uh, in a format that you need it. So you don't have to worry about all of this and you can focus on what's the most important, which is building your uh, application with us. We, of course, talked about Subquery and Moonbeam integration. We started a simple project using Subquery CLI and we indexed EVM data. Then we indexed also substrate uh, events within the same project. We explored some data mutation example and also uh, uh, learned about uh, entity relationships uh, in Subquery. So this is it. This is what we have done. And now it's the perfect time to have the last look uh, at our project. We will view it on GitHub this time. Okay, here we are. This is our project on GitHub. So I just want to give you a quick overview uh, so we can have this last last look and you are of course um, welcome to uh, explore it on your own later. Uh, we will uh, see the final result on the main branch, but uh, I've prepared um, separate branch branches for all the lessons so uh, you can follow um, the progress of our code step by step lesson by lesson uh, in the readme there'll be some um, useful information and resources for you to to look at so take a look as well and yeah we'll start with schema graphql uh, just a quick recap. This is the file where we define the shape of our data when we define our entities uh, here is the final result of our work with some comments. Uh, you may find them useful. And uh, during our uh, course, we've created transaction account approval and collator with all the needed properties. Uh, so yeah, this is the final result. Let's now move to manifest file. And here is our manifest the entry point to our application. This is the place where we configure a lot of stuff related with network and data sources. This is where we define what and where we are uh, indexing. And we also spend a bit of time here. Uh, here you can clearly see that within one project, we are able to index data coming from Frontier EVM and also Substrate. So we are able to index data from EVM and um, uh, from Substrate within one project, which is very useful. And now the final place wh where I want to have a look at with you right now is, of course, uh, the mappings folder and then the mapping handlers file. So this is the place where you transform the data that are coming from blockchain and you save it uh, into the database. Um, we spent some, some time here as well. Uh, need, we needed to uh, accommodate all the handlers from a uh, manifest file. We needed to um, save entities in our database. So all of what we did here had to also correspond with schema GraphQL file. And yeah, also left you some comments. So take a look and let me know your feedback, right? If you have any questions. This is the whole project. This is um, everything that we have accomplished during our course. Uh, you are more than welcome to uh, look around, um, use this code, uh, tweak it, and you know share your feedback with me. Ask your ask your questions. Subquery projects can be simple as this one, but they can get. Uh, definitely more complex if you're having more complex applications and you need a lot of different data and uh, you will learn in a, in a sec about different projects that are more complex and I will show you a great place to um, look at other projects and get inspired by them, learn how they are indexing and what they are indexing. So uh, yes, subquery projects can be more complex. However, in all of them, uh, what you need to remember about is that there are three files that you need to interact with. So we already know which are those files. So schema GraphQL, 
manifest file and mappings file. We already know that subquery is a perfect tool for your the app is an open source indexer, custom API, SDK, but subquery also has something um, else to offer. We have a managed service. We can uh, host your, pro your production infrastructure for your project for free. Uh, we will maintain it. We will run it for you. You can scale up with us and you don't have to um, worry about not only building and maintaining your indexer, but you can also uh, stop worrying about infrastructure. So this can be on us as well. So you can focus on uh, building your application. And we are currently uh, serving hundreds of millions of, of requests each day. And we're very proud of this. Let me just uh, quickly show you a bit more information about our managed service. So this is part of our website dedicated to managed service. I just want to give you a quick tour and uh, point to some interesting parts of this. So uh, as I said, yes, you can host with us and we have some good statistics to actually be proud of. We have had so far more than 21 billion uh, queries. That's pretty impressive. And also we are very proud of having 99.95 uptime. So this is, this is pretty good. And we have also uh, 100 networks um, supported and uh, more than 360 live projects. What does it mean with us? But you can also publish a project, uh, publish your latest creation, edit it, view it, uh, take a look at projects insights, get to know how uh, good it performs, what you can change, what you can um, improve. And you can share this project with the community and uh, inspire uh, others. You can also give back to the community, right? So this is something, this is something pretty interesting and where you can show where you can view those projects. You can view them in Subquery Explorer. This is a marketplace for all the published uh, projects where others are publishing and you can explore it on your, on your own. So let's have a quick look. Yeah, so this is the Subquery Explorer. And as you can see, there is a lot of projects to look at. Uh, some of them are featured, there are plenty of, and we can also find our own. Let's say Moonbeam. And here I can see this is the project. So this is our project, actually, <laughs> exactly the state or current state of the main branch uh, and, and it's hosted with subquery. There is a link to the GitHub repo. There is commit version. And here you can also um, play with the query because it's the GraphQL playground. And you can press the play button and see all the results of the query. You can, of course, as well, um, get some information about data that you can query. And uh, yeah, this is how you can explore what others are building. And you can also check how your uh, project is uh, operating. So just here, a few links for you. This is a subquery network managed service and also a link to subquery explorer. If you are willing to get to know more about others, uh, uh, projects and their ideas. And also, uh, as we, uh, as we saw, our project is hosted there as well. So here is the also a link for you. If you would like to, uh, play with it and get to understand, uh, subquery explorer more. So subquery is also something more than uh, open source indexer and then manage service. A lot of our efforts and a lot of our thinking and the core idea of the company is actually the subquery network, the future of web free infrastructure and the future of decentralized data. So we are building now an open, reliable, scalable, decentralized solution for the apps developers. The subquery network will index and serve uh, data to global community in incentivized and verifiable way. So when certain, when any project is published on the subquery network, anyone can host it. So this way data can be provided to users worldwide in the most efficient and fast way. There are plenty of roles uh, within the subquery network uh, with different uh, specification. So you can be a consumer, indexer, architect or delegator. And those roles are for all the people, no matter of the state of uh, and the level of their knowledge about blockchain. So there are roles for technical blockchain experts and also blockchain beginners. 
And you are more than welcome to learn more about Subquery Network. We prepared a detailed white paper. I linked it here on the slide, so you are more than welcome to read it and and you know understand more about the whole uh, philosophy behind the project, technicalities, and to understand where are we going with it. Okay, so let's explore now some additional features of Subquery. So as you know, uh, Subquery is a fully feature indexer uh, that we've built. Many of our developers are actually constantly working on optimizing it, bringing new features to it so that you don't have to uh, build your own indexer, maintain it, and then tweak it. Uh, you can rely on, on us. And I wanted to show you a bit more of advanced features uh, that you can use within your, within your project. So we will discuss accessing data on different chains. We will discuss uh, EVM support and WASM support, GraphQL subscriptions, and also automated historical state tracking with subquery. So with Subquery, you can access data on different substrate chains. We support every substrate chain, so there is no data pre-processing needed. This allows you to quickly fetch substrate data from different network, different um, parachains by loading their chain types. And we already have 22 substrate networks supported. Here is a quick example of how the how importing types could look like. So within the uh, chain types file, you need to import a proper file. And you need to include chain types within manifest. It's all done by default within starter project, but you can tweak it change it. We support additional types used by uh, substrate runtime modules, uh, such as types alias, types bundle, types chain, and types spec. All of them are supported. What's also exciting, and I already told you that, is the fact that we believe in multi-chain future, and we are also building our indexer for multi-chain uh, cross-chain query. So currently, subquery supports uh, Polkadot, Avalanche, Cosmos, uh, Terra, Kusama, and Algorand. And we are always in search for new emerging ecosystems with amazing potential, with huge developer growth. So stay tuned because uh, there'll be more ecosystems coming. And this allows you to scale up your project. You can start within with thinking about one ecosystem and then while building it, you can expand um, further beyond the, the, the current ecosystem. And that uh, will be easier with subquery because the data sources are a bit different. The data structure may be a bit different, like what you receive from the blockchain, but how you use subquery project, it will be pretty similar. So once you learn it for one ecosystem, it will be super easy uh, to learn for another one. So what's more, you can extract both EVM and substrate data in the same project from any EVM chain in Polkadot. Subquery supports all Frontier EVM implementations, Moonbeam, Astar, also Akala EVM Plus and Substrate Wasm. Let's talk now a bit more about GraphQL subscriptions. Pretty interesting, pretty useful feature. So it allows you to build more responsive apps by subscribing to changes rather than having to pull all the data each time when uh, asking for the latest changes. Like queries, subscriptions allows you to fetch some data, to take some data, but they are working more as a long lasting operations that can change their result over time. Subscriptions can be a very useful solution for you if you want to show the latest changes within your application and you want to show it uh, as soon as possible. So within this simple example, we subscribed to uh, account entity changes. So what happens is that anytime there, there is any type of a change uh, on this entity, uh, we will receive new data. And I also left you a link to a useful uh, source of information in our documentation so you can learn more. Let's uh, talk now about automated historical state tracking. Pretty cool feature that allows uh, you to go back in time. So uh, travel in time is possible <laughs> with subquery. So here, when as we look at Ali's account balance, we can clearly see that there is a lot of changes, right, uh, in her account balance. So as you can see, uh, Alice had on block uh, height 10, 
15 DOT and then at 15th block she has uh, 10 more. Basic subquery project that uh, indexes um, account balance data will lose the historical information, historical state of the uh, in this case of the block uh, height 10 and will only store the information about latest block and there will be no access to what has happened in the past. Uh, but right now subquery automated the historical state tracking for all the new projects in subquery. So it means that uh, right now you can uh, query the state of your uh, subquery project at any block height and access data at any block height. So this allows your application to travel in time and to actually access data from different periods and show how this data has changed over time. So in short, behind the curtain, every time uh, we need to update something, we'll also store the previous state so you can then uh, query it with GraphQL API and endpoint. And as always, there is a link for you to our documentation so you can learn more and you can enable it within your project. Okay, we all know that performance is absolutely important for any application, for any developer and also for subquery. So our developers are constantly working on improving our performance for you and delivering new features that will allow you to uh, also work on performance of your projects. And I also want to share with you some tips and tricks on how to optimize your project so you can speed it up. Okay, so let's talk about tips and tricks. Let's learn how we can optimize our, our project. So first of all, avoid using block handlers where possible and always query only necessary fields, right? Use filter conditions when it's possible to reduce the response size and to simplify your query. This is, this can be a big improvement for your performance. And uh, for large data tables, avoid querying total count. And uh, as we learned during the, the course, uh, add indexes to entity fields where, um, where possible. It, it helps with query performance. I set the start block where, when certain contract was first initialized. That's always helpful. Use dictionaries. You can learn more about them in our documentation as well. Always optimize your schema design. We did a bit of it, right? So try to reduce unnecessary fields, use indexes, as I said, and uh, keep it as simple as possible. We don't, there are always, or almost always, there are some things that we can, we can remove, rethink to keep schema file simpler. Use parallel batch processing as often as possible. Uh, Take a look in our documentation to learn more about uh, possible uh, possible options. You can minimize number of API calls to the minimum where possible. You can also use worker, thre worker threads here to move block fetching and block processing into its own um, worker thread. It can significantly improve the performance and speed up indexing up to four times. Of course, it depends on the project. You can easily enable it with using a simple flag. You will find more information about it also in our in other parts of our documentation. And you can also use a convenient modulo filter that allows you to uh, run a handler only once to a specific block. You can set uh, in you can set some intervals. It's very useful for grouping and calculating data. So for instance, if a modulo is set to 50, the block handler will run on every 50 blocks. This provides more control and speed ups indexing. So those are the tips and, and tricks on how to speed up a project in, in subquery. There is a lot more in our documentation. I strongly recommend you having a look. I think it's performance. It's important for everybody. Uh, so it would be good for you to to, to think about it and optimize your project when, when where possible. And on our side, we are also working on uh, speeding things up constantly. We want to have uh, and maintain a super fast, reliable SDK uh, tool for, uh, for developers. That's why we are working on the current state of our tool, but also on new features that will allow you to uh, optimize your project even farther. Should you have any question, 
technical issue or feedback, please drop us a line, share it with us. We appreciate it all and we are here to help in terms of any, any question and technical uh, difficulties. Join our active community on Discord. There is technical support channel. There are a lot, there are a lot of ambassadors and uh, there are subquery team members there. So for sure, there'll be someone who could uh, help you. Of course, drop me a line uh, if you will. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to your feedback and I'm looking forward to you becoming a part of our community. Wow, so that's it. We finished the whole course. Congrats. I'm very happy that you joined me and I hope you've learned at least a bit uh, about subquery and that you got interested uh, in subquery and you will continue uh, your journey with subquery further after this course. And of course, let's stay in touch. As I said previously, join our active community on Discord. I, uh, I'm leaving you a lot of useful uh, resources and, and links to our documentation, website, our social channels, uh, Discord platform, of course. So I'm really looking forward to uh, catching up with you, connecting with you. Once again, thanks. Once again, congrats. And I see you later. <laughs>